There's a new mini console on the block. It's called the A500 Mini. It's just come out. I'm going to take a look at it. Hi, and welcome back to The Shed. I'm Joe Bleeps, and today we're going to be taking a look at this thing here. This is the A500 Mini. I've had it on pre-order for a while. It's the latest mini console computer to come out for playing your retro games on a modern TV. We're going to do an unboxing of it, try it out, see what we think, and also add a few extra games to it. All right, so this is the A500 Mini. This is like a scaled down version of the Amiga 500 by Commodore. This was huge in the 90s in the UK. I can't emphasize that enough. Consoles were just about picking up in popularity. But in the UK and Europe, it was still very much about home computers. And the Amiga reigned supreme when I was a teenager. Buying, copying, swapping, borrowing, playing games. Lots of my friends had them. We had one, which was the A500 Plus. There was then also the A600 and the A1200 and so on. This little thing can emulate all of those in a much smaller little package so let's take a look at what we've got the front of the box we've got 25 games included we've got a mouse we've got a control pad now this is a little strange because the original amiga was very much played on a joystick what we've got to remember is that this by retro games is the successor to this thing here the c64 mini which is an awesome little machine but it came with a joystick that was horrible and it made the games quite difficult to play and sort of took away from the joy of the experience so retro games seem to have learned from this and packaged in a control pad now even though there wasn't really originally a control pad with the Amiga. This is styled after Amiga's CD console, the CD32, and it is in that style. So there is a little bit of the kind of heritage style to it. So we've got 25 games included. It doesn't include an AC adapter, but it's powered by USB. So I'm assuming we'll be all right with that. The thing with this is it cost £120, which is quite expensive. But when I took delivery of it today, it's reassuringly heavy. That's always a good sign. And also compared to the cost of buying an Amiga and getting it up to speed to be able to run all the games, the cost cost comparison starts to make much more sense in terms of buying one of these it's got 25 games included but the important thing here is this whd load now this is where you can download your own games and install them onto a usb stick and run them straight from there without any modding without any hacking required at all it just does that out of the box 25 games included very quick run through we got another world zool worms pinball dreams simon the sorcerer the sentinel alien breed 3d f16 combat pilot battle chest stunt car racer alien breed Dragon's Breath, Speedball 2, Brutal Deluxe, Cadaver, Kickoff 2, Paradroid 90, All Terrain Racing, Quack, California Games, The Chaos Engine, Titus the Fox, Lost Patrol, Arcade Pool, Project X, and Supercars 2. So, 25 games included, which isn't a lot for your £120, but as I said, you can add your own games, so really these are just there as a, a starting point, I think. We'll see how that goes. So we'll open up, nice little Amiga logo in there. We've got like a little vacuum foam cover. And here's our computer. It is quite lightweight. The keyboard itself doesn't work. The little LEDs on the caps lock and the power and the drive do. Obviously the little disk drive and everything else is fake. On the back we've got um, three USB ports, we've got an HDMI and we've got USB-C for power there. Uh, little rubber feet on the bottom so it should sit in place quite well. A500 Mini 2022 Retro Games. Input 5 volts 1 amp so that'll be the USB cable. So that is our actual machine and it feels and it looks great. It's a nice little companion piece to the, the C64 Mini in terms of scale and obviously even if this did work in terms of the keyboard it would be super tiny and frustrating apparently it works with the usb keyboard i have bought a usb keyboard to try out with it so we'll see how that is right what else have we got so we've got a quick guide with instructions on how to set up how to switch on and so on so we might be needing that when we're testing it out we've got this sort of tray set up and boxes inside so no surprises that this is going to contain the mouse quite excited that it was going to include the mouse they haven't got like the red light out the bottom so it looks more like the original mouse when it's in use because obviously the old one had a little rollerball inside two little satisfyingly clicky buttons and a usb input all in that sort of lovely light brown cream kind of color we've even got a matching hdmi cable i don't think i've ever had a beige hdmi cable this is a really retro style i love it this being our game controller does make for a smaller box when you don't have to put a joystick inside it and even though this is like a brand new item it does feel kind of vintage. I was expecting the D-pad to be quite a lot like the PlayStation D-pad, but it seems to be a little bit more raised than that. There's no clickiness to the buttons. It feels all right though, it feels pretty good. We'll have to see how that is for playing the games, but comfort wise, the ergonomics aren't too bad at all. We'll see how that is after a bit of a long play. And again, with cables, the controller connected via USB. <laughs> and we've 
Also got a beige USB-C cable. I really like this. You know, I did say earlier, and a lot of the things I'd read were that this is quite an expensive piece. So when you've spent quite a lot of money on something, it's nice to get a feel for the, for the quality that you're getting. I mentioned the little rubber feet. It does sit really securely without moving around much. All the cabling matching in this sort of classic beige color is a really nice touch. The fact that the controller really feels like decent quality, looking at the edges and where everything fits together, the build quality looks good. It feels good. It feels nice and solid on the controller. The mouse looks really authentic. The actual computer itself, the level of detail on this, it looks awesome, but it's not about making it just sit there and look nice. It's about playing it. One thing that I really like is that the USB ports are at the back. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but when you look at the collection of mini consoles I've got down here that all sit nicely next to one another, the Commodore has the USBs in the side, which means you can't have the joystick next to it and you can't really line up the other consoles sold next to it either which is a minor gripe but still i think it's a nice touch when you've got these all at the back so the mouse is plugged in and the controller's plugged in via the usb we've got the hdmi and the power plugged in it needed a one amp usb so the 500 milliamp output from my tv wasn't enough but i do have a little usb adapter that's got loads of things plugged in there and it's plugged in there and it works fine so we're plugged in we're powered up we get the little power led come on when we switch on there is a little power button around the back just here you just simply tap that to switch on and apparently you press and hold for two seconds to switch off now when it loads up we're greeted with this screen so we'll go with english and beef is next so the thing with the television settings a lot of the original games were popular in europe where we had 50 hertz as the output so although it will work with 60 it's better with 50 if it works with the tv so let's find out run television test television test will end in 16, 15 14 seconds Okay, well that seems to be okay, so we'll accept that, and here we are. Nice simple menu, information, screenshots, cover. I love pinball dreams, let's have a go on that one. Okay, I'm going to have to get used to these controls. So on our control pad, we've got the D-pad, we've got the L and R, A, B, X, Y, we've got home, which just brought me back here. So I'm going to have to be really careful I don't accidentally knock that while I'm playing. And then the menu button. So let's have a look on menu. We've got display options, system options, mouse sensitivity, music volume. I like this. So on the power LED, now that's just on now that you can get it to mimic the Amiga behavior so it looks like it's loading from the floppy drive, quite like that, so we'll do that. Language we've done, advanced options, TV settings, system information, legal notices, factory reset, initial build. So that is our main options. Display options, we can go fixed size, moderate zoom or screen fit. We're currently on screen fit, now the fixed size We'll try next. We can enable a CRT effect. I'm not really a big fan of that, but we'll try it anyway. And then we'll close that, see how we look, and close all of that, and load up Pinball Dreams. But it's saying you want F1, F2, F3, and F4. So you press one of those to select. In the majority of games, menu will bring up a virtual keyboard. So on here, we'll press menu, and it brings up this virtual keyboard here. So we could go all the way down to the bottom, and if we want to play Steel Wheel, we go on F2 and press that and it's loading steel wheel. We'll press menu to hide the keyboard and off we go. And I don't know how to launch. Hold down and then release, of course. So this is with the CRT effect on. So you've got like your scan lines and it's slightly smaller because it's not stretched. Now if I go to um, home 
and we go to the options and we go to display options and I'm going to have it on screen fit and I'm going to switch off the CRT effect and close that, close that, go back into the game. Again, we'll go on steel wheel, but this time I want to try something a little different. In advance of this turning up, I bought myself a retro looking USB keyboard that will hopefully work with this computer, but we shall see. Right, so the keyboard is plugged in. We're all set, so if we go to the main screen and we'll select beatbox, so if we go F3 on here, it works! That's much easier. I'm not a big fan of the virtual keyboard, so having that is going to be quite nice for playing it and make it feel much more authentic. Okay, let's turn the sound up a bit. So this, I think, stretched to the large size. It's not stretching it to widescreen, it's just scaled up. It's got rid of the CRT filter and it just looks much better on this TV. So now we know how to play. L and R triggers and hold down to release. And off we go. So I am getting like a little bit of input lag on the controls. I am could be this game, I'll try it with a few other games and then we'll see from there. Um, so if we go back to the menu, <laughs> okay, so every time I press menu it's going to bring up that keyboard. If you press home to get to the main home screen, let's have a look at Project X. Oh yeah. Okay, so I forgot that to jump in these games, I got so used to my consoles, you have to press up instead of the fire button, because the fire button fires. Right, so I've played through a few games now, and this is the first thing I'm noticing that is a little bit of an issue. Um, so I'll be in a game, like I was in California Games, and I'll be playing, and I'll be choosing my options, and I'll go to press start, and I'm just kind of hardwired that this is the start button, but this is actually the home button. So you can go through, you're on the main screen, you go in, you choose your event that you want to compete in, you enter your name, this is where my keyboard comes in handy. So I've got my name on there, select your team, okay. And then player two, I don't know how to get it to player one, but the thing is, I'm like, right, okay, I just want to start now. So I'll press start, which isn't start, it's the home button, and it takes me back here. <laughs> which is a bit annoying, but we've got this up here which kind of suggests that I might be able to get back to that by pressing home instead of launching the game and that should take me back to where I was in the game. So although pressing start by accident will pull me out of it, rather than press start game on this one, if I press home it'll take me back to where I was, thankfully. Uh, in the meantime, uh, what other games have we got? So we'll have a little look at All Terrain Racing. Now what's happening here is, as I'm loading games, the power LEDs will flash on and off, as it would on, on the original Amiga. I think I'm just going to really have to train myself to know that that is not the start button. Uh, like most games, I'm terrible at it. So I know I'm having issues with the controller, but on the main screen there is a help option. D-pad feels nice actually, so we've got like what each of these equates to, um, so you can have special on Y and B, uh, which I think is generally mapped to be up, so it'll jump, we'll try that in a moment, it's, it worked on Titus the Fox, uh, but fire 
is A and X and L and R as well. So why there's that many buttons, I don't know. Maybe there'll be more mapping options coming up. So that helps. And then virtual keyboard being the menu button when you're in game if you haven't got a keyboard plugged in. Now, the thing about me plugging the keyboard in is that I have now used up all three USB ports by having the mouse, the controller, and the keyboard plugged in. If I want to plug in my USB drive with my games on, I'm either gonna to have to unplug one of those, which would probably have to be the keyboard, or I could have a USB hub, and provided this works with the USB hub, I can have a number of things plugged in. So that's the next thing I'm gonna to have to figure out. And also, I'm just gonna to have to wait for these games to copy over, because I've got greedy and <laughs> got too many to copy on. So it's taken a little while to get those on. Now in the meantime, I've got this suitably retro USB hub. Uh, it looks like an old games controller. And we've got four USB inputs. So it probably would make sense for me to shut this down. So what I've done is I unplugged the keyboard, unplugged the mouse, plugged in my hub, and I've plugged the mouse and keyboard in there, which means I've now got one socket free for when I've got my other adapter in there. So hopefully everything will still work and our mouse works. Right, space to play. So my keyboard's working, which is good. Okay, so quick test with worms proves two things. One, I'm useless at worms. I've not really ever played that one before. And secondly, that the hub does work. The keyboard and the mouse work quite nicely. So that's good. Uh, we'll go to the main menu. Huh. We'll press home. Am I ever gonna get used to this? Am I? Is it just me? And keep pressing menu to go to the menu and it brings up the keyboard thing. Uh, so basically I've got fire, fire, fire. Now it would be up to jump, but what they tend to be doing is mapping the B button to the jump, which makes it feel a little bit better on the control pad. That feels much more intuitive. Okay, so it's time to start looking at how we can add our own games. First thing you're going to need is a USB drive. I've already done this with one, so I'm just using this for an example. I've found that an 8 gig drive is plenty, so you certainly don't need to shell out for a big 128 gig USB drive or something like that. There's not that much Amiga stuff out there. Uh, first thing you're going to have to do is format it. Now I'm working on Mac, so what I've got is disk utility up. I've got my drive in there. There's not really any files on there that I need to keep, so I'm going to go on Erase, and what I'll need is to have the ms-dos fat option and master boot record selected and then erase and then that will wipe the drive and if it's a fairly small drive it should be quite a quick process anyway all right so once that's erased it's ready to use on your a500 mini so all you got to do if you search a500 mini the actual retro games website should come up as one of your main options you just select that go to the main page and at the top we've got the option here for support will go there. So on the support page, we've got three options. The user manual is very handy to have a look at in PDF format, but these are the two that we want. Installing the WHD load package, which allows us to make this USB drive compatible with our A500 mini, and also a bonus USB games pack. Now, basically, adding your own games isn't strictly legal. Um, so me doing a tutorial of how to go and find a whole load of pirated games is not what I'm going to be doing here. But really, if you search for WHD load games, WHD load pack, you will find games out there on the internet. However, there is a nice legal ROM added in here that we can use to show the process. So we've got these two options, installing the package, and then the bonus USB games pack is like one additional game that we can use in this process to show you how to get it on the drive and how to load it up on the console. So, installing the WHD load package, you need to download this file here. If you go on the bonus USB games pack, you will download that file as well. So once you've got those two, make sure you know where they are, and we're going to put those onto our drive. Okay, so here's my two files. I've copied them into this folder. I will just open up both of those. And now I've got these two folders. Now, basically, they just need copy into the root of your uh, USB drive, which is there. 
So we'll copy the A500 over to there and the A500 games over to there as well. Now we've got our two folders. That's got all the stuff we need for WHD boot. And this one has got the Citadel game. Now, when you're getting your game files, just look for this extension IHA. Okay, so they're the files that will work with WHD load. Now that is on there, we can eject that and unplug it. And we're going to try it out on our console. Okay, so my drive is now plugged into the console. I've loaded the console up and we are currently in our main menu screen. Now, navigating along with the D-pad, what you've got to do is make your way through the games and you should see this USB symbol there. You get a few different options there, but we'll just load that up. And now we've got a list with our file structure. So the actual file structure in the USB drive doesn't really matter. You can create whatever folders you want and they will show up there. So if you want one for games, one for demos and so on, that will work. So I'll go on the A500 games. We'll go to Citadel V1.3. So the actual game settings are really important on these additional games because they haven't been optimized in the same way that the ones on the main console have. So if you go to menu to bring up the settings, um, you can make sure that you've got all the right things set up. Now I've already done this previously, so it's remembered my main settings. Um, but if you set it to auto center, um, and then you get your sizes as, as standard on there. There's different ways of setting it up, but that's that's pretty much standard there. You can map what controllers you want to use on it. So if it's a mouse game and it doesn't work with your mouse, you go in these settings and that should work okay. As standard, I've got port one as mouse and port two as joystick. You can set your speed, sensitivity and everything else. If you're happy with all of that, uh, we'll close that and then you can launch the game by pressing home. And after a moment of tension, because <laughs> it does take a little while first time round, uh, you'll get your options here. So there we go. We've got Citadel all loaded up and running. What I'm going to do now is I'll restart with my other USB drive in that I set up yesterday. We'll have a look at a bunch of the games I've got on there, see how well they run, and then I'll conclude this video and get it actually posted up. Right, let's go. All right, so my first impressions of this machine were good anyway, but now I've got the USB media access on there. It just opens it right up and it's so easy to do. So I've got a few different folders on there. I've got some music software that I've not had any luck with yet, so I'll keep going. Uh, that's my standard files for the WHD load. I've got all the games here. I've got a bunch of demos and I've got some beta and on release. So if we go in games, um, one of the first ones I tried out was Lemmings. Now I had some issues with Lemmings to start the game. I like the fact that when it's got the expansion RAM thing, which is what you would normally use to upgrade your Amiga, this is already like fully equipped with that capability. So this is obviously mouse controlled and the mouse works really well on it. So you'll see here, the screen is kind of contained within this space instead of going out to the full screen. So if we go back out, select the USB drive there, you see I've got current media Lemmings 1.5. If you press menu to go to the game settings, what we'll do is you see how auto center wasn't switched on. So if I select that now, you also get the option to auto crop with the Y button. Um, but you need to have auto center on. So if we just come out of there and then we load the game by pressing home, it should load up and you'll see a difference this time in terms of the display. So you can see now that's sort of a, a full screen display there, which isn't really what I wanted, was it? I don't want it to stretch to the entire screen, but it's good for purposes of demonstration. <laughs> you see how it, it takes up a lot of space there, but you've got the blank space at the side. So really that kind of maximizes what you've got there. If we start a new game, you'll see distinct difference in terms of the display. And I don't think it really suffers in terms of being upscaled. It still looks pixely, nothing looks mushy or messy around the edges. So again, if we press home to come out of there. Okay, so interestingly, on the standard settings that would come out, um, but now I've changed that display and come in and the game's playing it won't let me exit. Now I'll see if it works when I'm on the menu screen. So I'm back on there. If I press the home button now, 
that won't let me escape. So I'm assuming now what I'm going to have to do is restart the machine, which is a little bit annoying. Um, and also it means I've got issues in terms of saving my game. Um, but I have, I mean, I tried loads and loads of games on this and Lemmings is the only one where it happened. So that's part of the reason why I've loaded it up to show you. So don't think that that's going to be like a massive issue with the machine. Um, it's interesting that it worked on the default display settings, but not once I've changed it. So I'll have a little bit of a play around with that. Anyway, we're going to have to shut this down. Okay, that was interesting. <laughs> I might try that next time. So that's fully shut down now. But if you notice, when I switched off, it briefly went to that menu screen. So maybe if I'm having trouble exiting the game, um, if I tap on the power button, I'm going to see what I'm going to see what happens. So I'll load that up again and we'll try it. So I'll see how it looks with this maxed out and with that on auto center. And then we'll come out of there and we'll go. Oh, right. I just noticed something. So if I go on game settings, you'll notice that joystick port one and joystick port two is mouse. So maybe that means that because it's all mapped to the mouse, I then can't use the joypad which means I can't press that home button. So if I go to joystick on that second one and then come out of there and then we'll start the game, that might mean that I can then exit to the, the main screen using the pad. So that might have been the issue. So you'll see now my display is much, much better. It's much more like the sort of 4.3 display. So that works. We'll start the game. One player. See, if you want two player, you're going to have to have the the two mouse inputs. But most of the time you'll just have one mouse so it won't really matter. Right, so now we've got the game on and that's up and running and I press home. Now that brings me back to there, okay? So that may well be the option if you're in a game and it won't let you exit. Um, I just wanna try something else though. If I go back into the game options on there, so if I go, on the USB drive, and I'm still on that Lemmings file there, and I go on game settings. If I just turn that so it's on mouse for both, and close that, and then start the game. So in theory now, because we haven't got the joypad enabled, and we've got two mouse inputs enabled, um, once that's running, it may not let me escape this, let's just see. Right, okay, so now I am pressing on the home button and nothing is happening. So it does seem to be the case of if you don't have the joypad mapped as one of the inputs, then you can't exit. Now, if you remember what happened when I did the power button thing and pressed and held, we briefly got that display. So if I just tap the power button now, that takes us back out, okay? So there we go. I figured out something useful that was probably in the manual all along. But if you're having issues and you can't exit a game with the home button, then just tap the power button and it'll bring you back to this display and you've got full control over everything you're doing. So that's that's pretty useful. Right, let's have another look at what we've got in our list. Let's find some favorites. So we had Lemmings in there. And as you can see, I've got loads and loads of games in here. There's, there's just so many that you can get. Um, so if I come back out of there, so to go up a file level, you press Y, which is the top button, which kind of makes sense. And let's see what other games we can find here. So we had a look at Pinball Dreams on the built-in machine. Um, if we go along here, we've also got Pinball Fantasies on there as well. And we'll again, we'll just double check menu on the game settings. So we've got mouse and joystick back to normal there, auto center, crop width and crop height on full seems to work quite well. So we can now start that game. Now I found this happen with a few games and it sort of scans and there's files identified and it takes a little while to go through this auto booter thing. And I gave that a few moments and nothing was happening. So we came back out there I'm not sure if I just needed to leave it for longer to get it running, so I'm gonna do that for a bit and uh, we'll see if it actually starts up with anything. Right, so I had no luck with Pinball Fantasies, but Pinball Illusions seems to be uh, loading up okay. Oh, I've done the thing. I am gonna have to get out of this habit of pressing start. This is not the start button, Joe. <laughs> 
It's because I get impatient and I try pressing all the fire buttons and nothing happens, but it's just, I've just got to wait to get through all this stuff. Unless there's the space bar option. Let's have a look. So this looks like it's keyboard control. So if I move down there, it's got extreme sports and then spacebar to enter. So it looks like the controls on this one are keyboard based. I'm going to need to plug my USB keyboard back in in a minute. Oh, so space looks like a nudge. How do I launch it? Enter? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, it's a little bit. You can see that delay by hearing my keyboard, and you'll see that like the timing slightly out there. Let's try again. So it was enter to launch. So there is a slight lag on the input. I don't know whether that's down to the game or the keyboard, but the, that is definitely slow. Let's check out some more games. Forget it, I have not got the patience. It's quite late, like. Here we go. Best music in any game ever. I just love it. Quite like the fact that most games you load, you get this option and you can just select these with the mouse and choose with your unlimited lives and all the rest. So many of these games are so hard that I'm quite happy to grab those options. Okay, so button wise, I can throw things. So if they come down the ladder, we're all right. I'm assuming it's a batter round. Um, but I can't seem to climb the ladder, which is a bit of a disadvantage, Batman. Oh, oh, so I had to be perfectly lined up with the ladder. Tricky job. I wonder if I run out of these batarangs. 
Okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go up a level and we'll look at some of the demos. Now the demos, there's just all sorts of randomness, mostly like music and things like that, but I had loads of fun going through some of these yesterday. So went to a little bit of acid in the house. Okay, so I don't think I missed this before, um, but since I've added the USB drive, I've now got expert mode, which enable expert game settings. I don't know what that means, but we'll enable it anyway. This is because I've now got my advanced options, so there's more that I can do, more I can tinker about with. Right, so I could have kept going for longer, but I think we'll leave it there for now. I would like to get this video edited and out on YouTube pretty soon, so I can't keep playing forever. So in general, with the additional games, it really does come into its own. This is where you can play any of the games that you loved back in the day. I had some issues with the odd one. Now, don't forget, I just downloaded the first pack of games I could find. There might be better ones out there, ones that are optimized a little bit more for loading. That's something I'm going to have to delve into a little bit deeper. But really, it was just on the odd game that it happened for the most part the games that i loaded up were fine or with a little bit more tweaking to the settings were then fine in terms of the display on screen or the controls a few little issues that i was running into with the controller as i go along i am getting more and more used to just hitting the fire buttons and not hitting this uh, home button but if you are in the habit of using your usual style joypad and you've got the start button to get things going you will probably find that you accidentally launch back into that home menu quite often but the good thing about that is that it, you can just come straight back into the game again it's not like you've closed it completely it just pulls you out into the menu screen and then you can drop back in so that's not a huge issue if you are unable to get out of a game by pressing the home button you probably haven't got the control pad as one of your options like when i was playing lemmings and it had option one and two both as a mouse input then once it got loaded this wasn't doing anything however if that happens as i found you just tap the power button on the machine it brings you back out to that home menu and then you can do all the things you would normally do if you'd press that so control wise super easy to get used to so in terms of adding additional games using the drive i hope my guide was useful enough there was not really that much to do you basically search for a 500 mini takes you to the website go to the support page download the two packs stick them on a usb drive that's been formatted to fat 32 and away you go it's that easy and then you just go online try and find more of those files drop them onto the usb and it recognizes those straight away so i'm really really happy with how that's gone if you want to do save files i don't think i mentioned it when i was going through but again with the save files on the stuff on the usb drive it'll create individual save files for each game it's not like you've only got four save slots for everything on your usb drive so that was a relief when i found that out so yeah it's a new piece of kit i had to buy it myself uh, i had to get it on release day so obviously i'm not someone who gets these things in advance i am paying my own money for it so i don't earn anything to anyone by saying if it's any good or not i think they've done a really really good job with this and uh, i'm really looking forward to playing more and more i'm particularly looking forward to getting more people around to play so i might have to do a little bit of testing with alternative controllers maybe buy an additional controller for it and then perhaps put together another video where i'm talking about how i've progressed in terms of getting games working or how it's gone with multi player games but yeah i mean as i said earlier i've got an amiga 600 getting it set up takes up a lot of space it needs more money spending on it to get it to run anywhere near as quickly as this little thing does so i am happy with what i've got and i think it's super convenient and it plugs into my current tv no problem no adapters needed for me playing on amiga 
this is the way forward and um, nice way backwards to play some of my old favourite games. So that's it for now. I think I've included everything that would be important to someone considering buying one of these. If you'd never heard of Amiga before, definitely check it out. It was it was great fun back in that 16-bit era. So if there's anything I haven't mentioned that you were like itching, come on Joe, can you just get onto this please? Do let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can either do a follow-up video or let you know in my responses. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more like this and I'll see you for the next video. Bye.